Good morning, everybody. It's Friday, December 9th, 5.42 a.m. Central Time as I speak here. March corn futures up two and a quarter at 6.44 and three quarters. January soybeans up two and three quarters at 14.89. March Chicago wheat up three and three quarters at 7.50. March Kansas City wheat up two and a half at 8.47 and a quarter. March spring wheat up two and a quarter at 9.11 and three quarters. If you guys are listening on the podcast, appreciate it. Ratings and reviews are welcome. If you're watching on YouTube, guys, subscribe to the channel. Hit the like button. Drop me a comment. If you've got any sort of opinion on anything that I say here, drop it in the comments. That stuff really helps YouTube to help me to grow this channel. Appreciate it, as always. If you'd like some additional information from me, visit my website, www.standardgrain.com. Check out my premium subscription service today, guys. I send my premium subscribers a ton of information direct from me every single business day. Morning email goes out about 5.30 a.m. Central Time. In that email, you'll see every overnight headline you need to be aware of. Charts, graphics, weather information, all of my grain marketing recommendations. My daily subscriber-only videos are part of this deal. I do these mailbag videos once every couple of weeks, and these are my favorite videos to do. I uh, address a whole bunch of questions that come in from subscribers uh, you know, that had come in over the last couple of weeks. Most of these are grain marketing related, a lot of stuff regarding you know, unsold corn bushels, unsold soybean bushels, basis questions, all sorts of stuff along those lines. Uh, I get a really positive response when I send these out. If you guys are interested in this sort of content, sign up today. 50 bucks a month, cancel at any time. No other fee, no other obligation. Nobody will try to sell you anything else, I promise. We are approaching some fresh three-month highs in the soybean market. Your nearby March 23 contract peaked at 14.97 and a quarter overnight. That could be different by the time you guys uh, watch or listen to this, but that's the highest trade since uh, the mid or early part of September. You got a couple things going on here. I think the weather situation in Argentina is threatening. It's going to be 107 degrees in Argentina again today. They're hot. They're dry. There's not a ton of rain in the forecast. In addition to that, we've had some better uh, demand on the export front for U.S. soybeans. We had a pretty good week of export sales for soybeans last week. 1.7 million metric tons. China was the largest buyer. This print, that 1.7, that was above the upper end of what was expected for the week. So you're seeing some better export demand for soybeans. We also saw some flash sales reported yesterday. U.S. exporters sold 718,000 metric tons of soybeans to unknown destinations and an additional 118,000 to China. That's a total of 31 million bushels in flash sales in addition to the strong weekly report. So you got some better soybean demand uh, for uh, U.S. soybeans. You've got an Argentina weather problem and you've got soybean futures approaching some fresh uh, three-month highs here and approaching that $15 mark. Now, export sales for wheat uh, were terrible. Again, bottom of the barrel, 189,000. Um, not a good print. Accumulated wheat sales for the current marketing year are the worst seasonally in like two decades or more. Just absolutely terrible stuff. Corn sales were okay near the middle end of expectations at uh, 692 yesterday, but still corn sales year over year are off 48%. A lot of people think USDA is going to need to adjust their corn export projection lower. Uh, Maybe that happens in today's report. Maybe they wait a month or two, but that's probably something that is uh, coming. Conab or uh, Brazil's USDA, they had their crop report out yesterday. And uh, long story short, the potential for record corn and soybean crops remains very much intact. They did adjust their estimates slightly. They've got the soybean crop pegged at 153.48 million metric tons. That's down just very marginally versus last month. The uh, new soybean production estimate would, of course, represent a new record. It would eclipse the prior record from two years ago by 10%. So they're still talking a monster soybean crop in Brazil. The country's corn crop was pegged at 125.8 million metric tons, down slightly from last month. Still, that print, if realized, would eclipse last year's record by 8.4%. One thing that's interesting to note is Conab's projection for Brazilian soybean exports. They've got the export number at 96.6 million metric tons. USDA has that same number at 89 and a half. That's a difference of 7.1 million metric tons. 261 million bushels is the gap between uh, the export estimate for Brazil, uh, Conab versus USDA. That's pretty substantial, 261 million bushels, when you consider that the entire U.S. carryout is projected to be only 220 million bushels. So is Brazil right? Is USDA right? Is it somewhere in the middle? I'm not too sure, but uh, that's something that uh, could and probably will have some market implications here. 
A leak in the Keystone oil pipeline caused significant volatility in the crude oil market yesterday. This story broke like an hour after I recorded yesterday, so I didn't touch on it yesterday. The Keystone pipes oil, of course, from Canada to the U.S. There was a leak near the Kansas-Nebraska border that resulted in a shutdown. The Keystone can move 600,000 barrels of crude per day. Crude oil futures rallied very briefly on this news. It was a sharp rally, several dollars per barrel. The nearby January 23 WTI contract peaked near 75 or at 75.44 per barrel, but then went back and finished the day lower and at fresh 12-month lows. So the news was simply not bullish enough to save what has really been a bear market in crude for several months now. One energy analyst said this, oil markets are exhausting. The initial oil spike following the Keystone Pipeline leak news did not last as some energy traders expect this, this disruption to be temporary. Uh, they haven't given a timetable for repairs, although the uh, work on this deal is ongoing as of this morning. Turkey's president says he's going to meet with Putin <clears throat> excuse me, and Zelensky on Sunday. I think this is going to be like a web or Zoom meeting or something. The uh, goal is to strengthen the Black Sea grain deal. Things have been really quiet on the Ukraine grain front. I haven't talked about this in a while because there hasn't really been much to talk about. We haven't really seen anything, anything in terms of significant headlines since the grain deal was extended last month. There's been a little bit of chatter in the news regarding potential peace talks between Ukraine and uh, Russia and, and NATO trying to get this thing resolved. But uh, pretty much everybody involved, all sides have said <clears throat> that it's too early for that. So you've got a lack of, <clears throat> excuse me, a lack of bullish Black Sea news. And that I think has probably helped to drive wheat prices lower. U.S. drought uh, remains well in place and continues to linger. USDA released weekly drought data yesterday. You've seen a vast expansion in drought across U.S. corn and soybean areas in particular since uh, late summer. Drought has been in place over your uh, areas of the Southern Plains and Western Corn Belt uh, for a much longer period of time. If you look at areas, crop areas experiencing drought versus August 30th, Corn area is experiencing a drought in the United States now 67%. That number was only 28% on August 30th. Soybean area is experiencing a drought now 69%. That number was only 21% on August 30th. Uh, winter wheat area is experiencing a drought now 73%. That number was 53% on August 30th. So drought remains uh, very much an issue in the United States. We do have a crop report today. This is the monthly crop production and WASDE report. It will be out at 11 a.m. Central Time. Typically not a ton of changes in the December report. I've got the South American production uh, estimates up on my screen here. So we're looking for slightly larger uh, Brazilian crops, Brazil soybeans, Brazil corn, and slightly smaller Argentina crops. Um, we may see some changes there. USDA could kick the can down the road too. Some people expect some marginal downward revisions to the demand estimates for U.S. corn and soybeans. Uh, they don't have to do that today. They could wait a month or two. A lot of times they'll wait till January. But that report will be out at 11 a.m. Central Time. Monthly U.S. inflation data is due out today and again next week. The Bureau of Labor Statistics will release wholesale inflation data, that's PPI, this morning at 7.30 a.m. Central Time. On an annualized basis, PPI rose at a rate of 8% in October. Traders expect the November print due out this morning to be 7.2. So we're looking for reduced inflation. Uh, the PPI numbers peaked at 11.7% in March, and that's a record high. And this data set only goes back to 2010. If it went back to the 80s, those would have been your record highs. But 11.7% is your record PPI print. So we're expecting reduced inflation today. We've got uh, CPI, consumer inflation data, out on Tuesday next week. So these inflation prints are important because they will help to drive Fed decisions regarding interest rates. And that's like, the biggest deal in the entire world when it comes to financial markets. The cattle market finished the day higher yesterday. Feeder cattle were uh, sharply higher. Cash cattle was reported at uh, 154 in the south, again, 156 in the north. Not, a, not a much change versus what we saw earlier this week. U.S. dollars a little bit lower. The stock market's higher. S&P's up 13. Dow's up 70 points. Gold's up two bucks. Crude oil up 46 cents at 71.92 in the January WTI. Remember, guys, report at 11. Have a great weekend. I will talk to you Monday.